State and federal officials are taking a closer look at a Hanford contractor following a King 5 investigation. Our investigators found evidence that the contractor ignored signs of a double shell tank leaking nuclear waste for nearly a year before doing anything about it. Now the governor's office wants to know how and why this happened. We are going to uh, uh, be insistent that our federal partners be open and transparent with us to the extent humanly possible. So we will, are and will be reviewing what happened in this particular circumstance. Federal regulators also ordered a full review of the contractor's management and practices by August 1st. Tonight we take a look at the biggest red flags that popped up while the company looked the other way. And we'll see how tense the situation got as one worker pushed his bosses to pay attention to those warnings. King Fly Susanna Frame is here with more on her investigation, Hanford's Dirty Secrets. Well, Dennis and Lori, we've heard about other leaking tanks, so why is this one so important? This tank is holding waste that is so toxic that if it were to eat through its outer shell and reach the nearby Columbia River, it would contaminate irrigation water, crops, salmon, our food chain, not for months, but for hundreds of years to come. This is one spot at Hanford the public is never allowed to go. Underfoot, the most hazardous material on earth is brewing inside a million gallon double shell tank. This tank is, a, is holding the nastiest of nasty stuff at Hanford. A year and a half ago, Mike Geffrey, who works for a Hanford contractor, saw what no one expected. Evidence that tank was leaking. If so, it would be the first double shell tank to ever leak at the site. I knew it was serious because that's what my career has been for the last 25 years is to monitor these tanks, to check for leaks. I mean, that's been what I've done. Geffrey reported his findings to the top company guy in the field right away, WRPS manager Dave Strasser, who argued this wasn't serious, that rainwater, not nuclear waste, must have creeped into the space between the tank's inner and outer shells. It was kind of just, we don't want to deal with it, Mike, you know, just let it go. Shut up. Just shut up. Just let it go. Yeah, just. Don't worry about it. But Geffrey did worry about it as warning after warning rolled in. A leak detection alarm went off. A few weeks later, an air monitor spiked to the highest reading of radioactivity ever seen by current employees. Five months after that, equipment got stuck to the tank floor, an indicator it was glued to sticky waste. I complained a lot about it. You know, I made a lot of statements of what, what are we going to do? After all that, the employees here at Hanford came across the biggest red flag of all, something the experts say should have sent their managers scrambling to find answers. A broken wire, similar to this one behind the glass, was pulled out of the space between the shells. It gave off an extremely hot radiation reading, one that shocked the workers, but not the managers. They didn't call for more investigation. Instead, they kept to their rainwater theory. It's hard to believe that you could get this much advanced warning of a problem and not deal with it. Marco Kaltofen is a top radiation expert located in Massachusetts. He's been to Hanford many times. I really don't know what it's going to take. What is it going to take to get you to wake up and start dealing with a problem? Because problems do not fix themselves and they definitely don't fix themselves in Hanford. WRPS, the contractor hired by the feds to take care of all the tanks at Hanford, denied repeated requests for an on-camera interview, but they told us their experts disagree. They said contamination readings were well below what would have been expected from tank waste and that the alleged red flags were investigated and determined unlikely to be caused by a leak. Months went by. Yeah. And what happened? Well, nothing. Geoffrey says his WRPS bosses told him to conduct business as usual, but that didn't happen. Yeah, I'd come home and be just frustrated and grumpy, couldn't sleep at nights. He even considered ditching his long and successful career. They took the fun out of it. This company took the fun out of my job. Just was just didn't enjoy it anymore. You know, it's hard to go to work and to fight so hard to do the right thing. But Geffrey stayed on the job and was there to see this. Photos of not rainwater, but nuclear sludge oozing into the space. 
The pictures were taken during a routine inspection nearly a year after managers dismissed his first warnings. What I was doing was right, you know, and it validated that um, I was doing the right thing by calibrating the stuff and sticking with it and that it actually worked and it detected the leak and, and there was a leak there. One of the reasons this whistleblower, Mike Geffrey, is so emotional is because he understands what's at stake, that it's a race against time. Do something about that leaking tank before the sludge makes its way into the groundwater and the Columbia River. So waiting, he believes, put them a year behind trying mm -hmm. to work on a solution. And we're going to hear more on this situation, I hope. Yes, next week. All right. Thank you, Susanna. Thanks, Susanna.